Are you feeling overwhelmed as a PhD student or a researcher? Are you working 50 or more hours um, a week and your research papers are still not advancing? Do you feel like, you know, you're constantly on this hamster wheel but aren't really publishing papers in top journals regularly and you feel burned out, you just feel tired and frustrated with the whole thing? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to publish more papers while working less and feeling happier and less stressed. If you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkowak and I run Academic English Now, where we help PhD students and researchers um, write and publish papers in top Scopus Index journals. So how can you do more, basically publish more papers in better journals while working less? That sort of seems to be the ideal. Um, and something that probably a lot of us would aspire to do, but most of us, including myself, have very often abysmally failed at. You know, most of researchers and PhD students that, that come to us for, for support at Academic English Now, they're constantly on this hamster wheel where they're working incredibly long hours, but they aren't really publishing papers in top journals and they feel burned out, frustrated, overwhelmed, like they might quit. And so so that's why in, in this video, I, I wanna show you how you can actually start working less and feeling more relaxed, but be actually achieving more of your priority. And if your priority is publishing research papers in top journals, I'll show you how to achieve that. So first of all, you know, you need to clarify your goals. Um, a big reason why, you know, a lot of us find ourselves on this hamster wheel, where we're constantly like doing tasks and tasks and tasks and more tasks and more tasks and more tasks, but aren't actually achieving our goals is because we either haven't properly defined our goals or we've lost sight of our goals. So maybe at some point in the past, you have sat, you sat down and you, you know, you wrote down what you wanted to achieve in 2024, but you lost sight of it because of that constant sort of, um, you know, hamster wheel thing where, you know, you go to the lab and you have to read papers and read students' work and give lectures and all those kind of things and meetings that you have to do. And so you need to set clear goals and, and clear goals are smart goals. So they've got to be specific, they've got to be measurable, they've got to be achievable, they've got to be relevant, and they've got to be time bound. Um, so if you've lost sight of your goals or you haven't clarified them, I, I really want you to pause this video right now and sit down and write a smart goal for this year. Remember, make it specific, make it measurable, make it achievable, make it relevant and make it time bound. So to give you an example, it would be something like, you know, I want to um, publish two experimental paper and one systematic review in Q1 journals in um, linguistics by the end of 2024. Okay, that would be a smart goal. And once you've done that, you, you also need to avoid having multiple priorities. Historically speaking, the definition of priority is the most important thing. But the way we've started using the word priority is now, you know, we need to actually say that it's our number one priority where, you know, by the very definition, there can only be one priority because it's the most important thing that you should be focusing on. So. Whenever you get on this hamster wheel and you feel like you're not moving towards your goal, you really need to pause for a second and ask yourself, what is my priority? What is the one thing that I should be doing right now? Because there's always multiple things that you could be doing, but what is the one thing that you should do today that will move your boat, your research boat, the furthest, the fastest? That's always the question you should be asking yourself. Now, the third thing that you really want to do is to avoid multitasking. So um, when you go on the internet, you know, you might have read about the, the thing that you have to multitask, that multitasking has lots of benefits. And if you don't multitask, you're going to fail in the modern world. But that's completely wrong. And research shows us that, you know, we cannot focus on more than two tasks that require our attention. Okay? So, of course, you can walk and chew gum and listen to a podcast, but chewing gum and walking doesn't require any attention. The only 
thing that you're paying attention to is the podcast. But try listening to the podcast and actually understanding it and remembering something from it. And then at the same time, writing a research paper and maybe maybe having a meaningful conversation with your partner. Well, it's just impossible. Okay, You cannot multitask. Um, you cannot do more than one thing that requires your um, attention. So what you need to do is just have blocks of time where you focus on one thing. Because when we're doing more things at the same time, if we put them on a, on a horizontal x axis and then productivity level on the vertical axis, um, the productivity level just plummets exponentially um, with the number of things that we're doing. And past two things that we're trying to do at the same time, our brain cannot handle it. What, our brain will, what your brain will do is it will constantly switch between the tasks. So it cannot do them at the same time, it will be switching. And then there will be what is called attention residue. So when you switch from one task to the other, on average, research shows that it takes you about 20 minutes to actually regain focus on whatever you were doing. So it's not only that, you know, it's terribly inefficient to be switching your attention from one task to the other, but there's also attentional residue. And it's going to take you much longer to refocus on the task that you were doing. Okay, so never multitask, but have one clear priority that you're going to be focusing on, for example, for the next hour or two hours. Can you can you do multiple things in a day? Of course, most of us will. But will you know, if you want to be very productive, have buckets of time that you put on your schedule. For example, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., you're just focusing on writing. And 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., maybe you're focusing on reading. And then 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., you're in the lab. Whatever it is, focus on one thing in a specific time bucket. Next really big thing here is what is called essentialism. So essentialism is basically focusing on what is essential for achieving your goal and minimizing or eliminating everything that isn't um, essential to achieving your goal. Um, so, you know, we always have choice about how we spend our time. Even if you think that you don't because you were forced to attend a meeting or, or something like this, you do have a choice. In the long run, you can choose not to attend these meetings or to minimize the frequency of certain meetings. You always have a choice um, to how you use your time. And time is finite, so you need to choose wisely. And basically, there are there are many things that are that are trivial, uh, so they're basically distracting you from from your goals. But most of us, unfortunately, focus on the trivial many. We focus on on doing lots of things to keep ourselves busy. But what you should be focusing on are the vital few things that are essential to moving the boat forward and helping you to achieve your number one priority. So in order to achieve more by doing less, what you need to do is focus on the vital few, do one thing at a time, and then start subtracting or eliminating or minimizing if it's not possible to eliminate the trivial things that are just filling up your schedule but aren't moving the boat forward. So what you need to do is you need to do a time audit. So basically you need to um, open an Excel sheet and just write down everything that you do for seven days in a day in half an hour intervals. And this will allow you to identify what, what you're actually spending your time on. Because very often we might be thinking that we're actually, you know, doing the things that we're supposed to be doing. But when you actually do a time audit, it's very revealing. And it turns out, it might turn out that you're not focusing on what you should be focused. Once you've done a time audit, you want to divide those activities into, into buckets. So um, let's say, you know, you find yourself maybe answering emails and scrolling through Facebook and uh, looking at this YouTube video. Well, that's kind of a bucket would be social media, let's say. OK, so you want to kind of group these little activities into buckets and then you want to divide those buckets and activities into essential and non essential. At the, at the beginning, it might be difficult and you will s feel that almost everything is essential, like attending meetings and, and those kind of things that you've been doing for a very long time is essential. But remember, something is essential when it actually helps you to achieve your overall priority and your goal. So if you've set yourself the goal of, I don't know, publishing three papers by the end of 2024, you need to ask yourself, do these activities 
actually help me to achieve that goal. If they don't, they are non-essential. And if they do, they are essential. So divide them into those two buckets. And once you've divided them into those two buckets, well, you take the essential things and you put them on your calendar and you try to maximize the time that you focus on the essential things. And in order to actually work less and have more time for those essential things, well, we need to eliminate the non-essentials. Okay? And there are basically three ways in which you want to do this. The best one is just to eliminate it completely. So the easiest example to give you is, let's say, with social media use. If you, if you find yourself that you, you, know, you spend a lot of time in your day using social media and that distracts you from writing papers, well, just eliminate your phone or eliminate the social media from the work environment. Just leave it at home, right? That's the, the best strategy to do is to eliminate now, with certain things, it might not be possible to eliminate it. For example, we cannot um, eliminate answering emails completely. You will still have to answer emails, even though they are most of the time just distracting and aren't really helping you move towards, um, towards your goal. But what you can do is minimize how much time you spend answering emails. And you could have a 30 minute time bucket at the end of the day, let's say at 5 p.m., where you're going to answer emails and other work-related messages. And that's it. So you minimize it. And then the third really good strategy is to either delegate it or automate it. So if something cannot be uh, um, eliminated, it cannot be minimized, well, you might be able to delegate it to somebody or you might be able to automate it. So there are many AI tools now that can help you to automate certain tasks, like reading papers can to a great extent be almost automated, right? And answering emails to a great extent can be automated. And maybe you're in a position where you can delegate certain things, right? Um, you can delegate them to, to people at work, to your PhD students, if you're a head of the lab. But for example, if you, if you find yourself, I don't know, spending a lot of time maybe cleaning and cooking, well, you could delegate that and you could, you could hire somebody to do that for you. And it can be actually very inexpensive if you, if you do that. You could hire a virtual assistant to do many of the non-essential things that you don't want to be doing, like, for example, scheduling meetings, uh, managing your calendar, answering your emails, right? So delegating or automating is the third way in which you can maximize your time. So if you want to publish more papers while working less, um, you need to make sure that you've got smart goals and that you always clarify your priority for the day, for the week. And then you, you need to stop multitasking as well. And then you need to pursue essentialism. So you need to start saying no to a lot of things that have accumulated on your plate. Because the reason you're working so much and achieving um, little or less than you want to be achieving is because you know, you're focusing too much on the non-essential things. And you need to eliminate those. And if you do, then you'll have more time for the things that actually move the boat forward and help you to achieve your goals. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, but you want to work with me and my team on a more personal level, then book a free one-to-one -one consultation where we're going to identify um, what your challenges are, what your goals are, and devise a personalized plan that will help you to achieve those goals faster. And you can book the free one-to-one -one consultation right below this video.